What's going on, y'all? It is New Year's Eve, December the 31st. It is currently 80 degrees in South Louisiana, and it is extremely humid. We are headed to our second no cooling call of the day. The first one I went on was a uh, RV or a, like a motorhome, you know, the big one that you drive. I actually just did a change out on the people's house maybe a month ago. Um, and he called this morning and said they were getting ready to go away for a while in their RV and um, that the front air conditioner was making a noise, but like a clicking noise. So I tore it all apart, checked the capacitors, which a capacitor wouldn't make noise. Didn't hear anything. I had to take the uh, relay panel apart and um, I gotta take this phone call, guys. Okay, sorry, I had to take that phone call. So I tore the relay panel apart like I had to take the, if you've ever worked on a camper AC, you know, you gotta, it's, it's pretty compact. And I found three, re, two relays and then a board, an ICM board, and the relays weren't making any noise. I tried to get them to make noise, they didn't. So we're gonna kind of play that one by ear, but the machine is cooling. And he said, when it starts clicking, it doesn't affect it from cooling. So I put the unit back together, everything was working fine. We're gonna play that one by ear, give it a couple days. And um, now we're headed to a new customer that was referred to me by another customer that I did a change out for a couple, last year or two years ago. And they just bought the house, it's a mobile home. And um, I think he, he said the outdoor fan is not working and he wants it all checked out and possibly replaced. So we'll see what kind of footage we can get on that for y'all. Okay, we're in a tight spot. He doesn't have much of a property line. We got a fence here, a Nord, an old Nordine condenser. I can hear the contactor buzzing. I'm sure y'all can hear that as well. No caps. My fingernails are not. Oh, I lost my pen. Let me see if I can. Or something that's the suction line Ooh, that thing ain't got hardly no freon in it I'm gonna start with the disconnect ah yeah look at that the fuses are burnt they're loose that's exactly how I found it. Not even look. Yeah. So. All right. So the first thing I want to do is see if we have line voltage coming to this disconnect. My line voltage on this box is on the outside. And we do, so we do have power coming. Now we're gonna check these fuses, put the dummy beep on. You can see the green light and hear it. Fuse, that fuse is good. And that fuse, well, yeah, both fuses are good. They just weren't in there tight, but I don't think this thing's got much Freon in it at all. Okay, it's running, but we have no outdoor fan motor. So I'm going to pull that out. Find me something to try to spin it with. There's gotta be something around here. If I can get a meter lead down there. It's not that far down. Oh no, she's bound up. 
Yeah, that motor is bound up real tight. Oh yeah. Yep. This thing is not worth putting a motor on and plus I think it's extremely low on Freon. The, in, the indoor coil doesn't look good. The electric furnace doesn't look horrible, but it's dirty. I was referred to him by a friend that I put a full mobile home system in for his friend. And uh, probably gonna end up doing the same thing here. The capacitor, I don't even know what size that is. I do know on Nordine, that red is hermetic, yellow and orange are common, and blue is the fan. I'm gonna try. To undo this damn thing. Let's see if we get any kind of reading on it. Okay. Okay. Here. Here we go. Hey, look, guys, I found it. It is a 50 at 5 or a 50 plus 5, 50 slash 5. So we have a lot of rust, though, but let's see if we can get a reading off this thing. Just hold them. All right, so I'm gonna scratch me a clean surface right here on common. You've got to scratch when you have that much rust so you could get a proper reading or you're gonna get a false reading. Sandpaper would be good, you know, if you wanna clean the terminals, but if you just scratch real good and you can see some, uh, like there's a little, so a pretty decent clean piece right there. Here's a pretty good clean piece on the side of the common. So I'm gonna try to put the common in there. And then read the, okay. Let's see. Okay. If you look right, oh, see, it just depends. You got to be on, you got to have a good connection. 4.9, so that'll turn the fan motor. Uh, the, but the fan motor's bound up. I can feel it. Now we got to try to find a decent connection. I think I found one right here on the Hermetic. And this is common. Yeah, we got 49. So the capacitor is good. So we have a bound up fan motor and a... Uh, Let's see, blue is fan on Nordine. Orange is a common from the fan. Red is your start winding for the compressor, which would go to Hermetic, Hermatic. And then you have a short yellow that jumps from the uh, contactor to the capacitor. Well, you know what? She's just going to have to wait. I'm going to mount this back real quick. Yes, ma'am, I'm coming. Give me one second. I got a neighbor bugging me about my truck, about where it's parked. Let me get this last wire hooked up. Golly. Okay, I got it back on. All right, guys, let me go move my truck before this woman has a hissy fit. All right, I had to go move my truck for a neighbor. I got the old analogs out here. I just want to put some 
I can't check, really check it, but I want to check the standing pressure. But I believe this thing is pretty, doesn't have much gas in it. No, it doesn't. Look at that. It has about It has about 15, 16 pounds of pressure. So the system is just not worth fooling with. It needs to be replaced. And that's what I'm gonna give a quote on. So a lot of guys are like, well, John, if the system is like that, why did you wire the capacitor back up and put it, mount it back in place on its bracket? And the reason is, is because just because the unit's dead doesn't mean you should just abandon it and leave it, you know, like just leave everything hanging because I've had to go do that. I've, you know, sometimes people get second opinions. And if this man chooses to get a second opinion, I have no issue with that because I'm very confident in my diagnosis. We have a bad outdoor fan motor and we have a system that is dead empty on refrigerator. So I don't really want to repair this system. I mean, if the customer wants me to come hunt the leak, and and do that i mean i'll do it i'm not gonna say i won't do it but I, I don't want to i and i don't think it's in the customer's best interest the best thing for them to do is replace the system because it's old and it's r22 so which i do have retrofits but i'm you know my professional opinion is is to get rid of it but the reason that i put the unit back together is in case they do get a second opinion you know, if I were to leave all that hanging in there, they could say, oh yeah, look at, look, this guy didn't even bother to put the unit back together. He just left the capacitor in the bottom of the cabinet and he, he, you know, he left the wires dangling. He didn't even try to clean up, you know? I'm just not gonna do that. I'm putting the unit back together just like I found it. Now I'm not gonna make any improvements on the system, but I'm going to put the system back together as I found it. And when I found it, the cover was on, the capacitor was mounted, all the wires were wired up to the capacitor. So that's how I'm gonna leave it. I'm also gonna put the disconnect in upside down because this unit does not need to run because it has no gas in it. So the disconnect has been installed upside down. I'll change the fuses in it if, if we are awarded the job, but I'm pretty much done here. I am going to go inside turn the thermostat back off and I am going to call the customer and tell him what I found and tell him what I think he needs to do this unit is sitting on the ground no pad we don't have much room to play with I don't even know if I'll be able to fit a ream in here I might have to go with an ICP just because of the physical size of a ream condenser I showed y'all that fence earlier. I mean, I, I don't know that I could squeeze a ream in here. I might have, I'll have to get a tape measure out and see, but if you look here, there's the house, there's the unit, there's the fence property line, and those reams are pretty big. So we gotta change out this BX whip. That's not, no good. And you can see the unit is sitting. I haven't been able to find a pad. Well, maybe, oh, it's, it, yeah, maybe there is a pad under there, but we'll put a new one and lift it up higher. The line set is buried, um, but we'll remove the skirting and lift it up because we're going to lift the new unit up if we're awarded the job. And uh, we're going to make several changes. But yeah, that motor, I can, uh, Try to push on it for y'all. I don't think y'all can see it too good earlier. Let me see if I can, uh, I'm trying to get y'all a shot. Okay, there it is. Yeah, look. I mean, I'm pushing on it, son. That sucker is bound up. I wonder if there's something stuck in it but it doesn't matter. There's no refrigerant in it anyway, but I'm gonna pull the top off. I'm curious to see if there's something stuck in there. All right, so there's nothing stuck in it, but she is bound up. I mean, I can, look at that. Look at the shaft, guys. 
Look at that. Yes. Oh shit, I dropped my light. Some light back on it. There we go. Look at the shaft. Look, look, look. Look at that. The shaft is falling apart. I gotta take a picture of that for the customer. And it's falling apart up here too. Look at that. And look at the motor. I mean it is it is bound up. So nothing stuck in it. It's just it's rotten. Time to upgrade. Okay, here's the indoor section. Pull this grill off. So what I do with them is I put a I'm gonna put a new furnace on this one too. At least I'm gonna suggest it. And I lay 16 by 20 inch filters right on the coil. And I usually cut in another return up there. Or actually what I'll do is the furnace that I use, I can put a filter in the door and then it has a filter rack built into it. So I can lay the filter in the door to cover the front and then the return air that I'm gonna cut in up there uh, that will be filtered by the filter rack and that stupid fresh air duct will cut that and cap it off because that's not necessary. But you can see the shape that the coil is in. It looks pretty oily. It's not in the best shape. There's the electric furnace, air handler, whatever you want to call it. We'll re-PVC that with all new because that's that ABS shit that loves to clog. So it'll be PVC all the way. It doesn't even have the clips anymore to hold the door. So we'll definitely be quoting out an entire new system here. And I put my tape measure back in the truck, but I think I usually do an 18 by 18 right here. And I just put a, I put a stamp, I put a stamp grill, not a filter grill. Because we'll never put a filter up, you know, up above that. It'll be a stamp grill just so it can have more return air. And it's a three ton. This is a 16 by 80. I'll bump it up to a three and a half. A lot of you guys disagree with that. I really don't care. It gets hot here in Louisiana and a three ton is not big enough for a 16 by 80. It'll struggle during the hot summertime. And of course, we'll get rid of this junk and put them a good thermostat. Put it back on off. Okay. I'm gonna lock the house up and call him and see what he wants me to do with his keys. I appreciate you guys watching. If we get the job, we'll try to film it. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.